I want to welcome each and every one of you to our Sunday morning uh, worship service. Uh, we hope that you had a r really good Bible class, and uh, if you missed the Bible class, we we ask uh, or we hope that you'll attend our next one. Um, if you're visiting with us, you're our honored guest, and uh, I see quite a uh, quite a few visitors. So if you will take the time, there should be a card in front of you in the pew in front of you. If you will fill that out, you will have a time to uh, put that into the collection plate when it comes by. Uh, it's good to have our camp folks back with us. Uh, I hope that y'all had a really good week. I know that you're probably exhausted, but we are glad to have you here. Um, today, uh, we will be having a VB brief VBS meeting after the worship service, uh, and then we'll have lunch, and then we will go door knocking uh, to promote our VBS. So if you're interested in that, uh, please meet us down at the fellowship hall. Uh, and you can come back today. Uh, at 5 p.m., we'll have our evening prayer service, so, you know, you can make a whole day of it. Uh, you can door knock and then be back for prayer service. And uh, So uh, the house-to-house, heart-to-heart -to -heart baskets are ready. They're uh, at the double doors to my left, your right. Uh, if you will, after the worship service, you can pick one up and help distribute those to uh, new movers in our neighborhood. Uh, the youth group will have a game night next Tuesday, June the 25th at Top Golf. Uh, Chris has asked that you uh, let him know if you plan to go to that as, as soon as possible. Seniors, your next outing is July the 11th uh, to Jason's Deli, so all the details will be in the bulletin. Um, we will have an area-wide singing this upcoming Friday. Uh, if you can help sing lead songs, you can see Chris. Um, and. Uh, we have uh, quite a few in our, uh, that asked for prayers this morning, so let me run those down, and then we're going to have Chris come up and give us a camp recap. Uh, Sally Smith's sister-in-law and brother-in-law have both, both been diagnosed with cancer, so continue to remember them in your prayers. Uh, John, who is uh, actually Cox's uh, grandfather, is in the hospital with a, a pulmonary embolism, so remember him in your prayers. Uh, Jay and Linda are not with us this morning because they have the camp crud. Um, and uh, uh, Joe Mabry will be having some upcoming tests this week. Uh, they're going to do a biopsy of his prostate, so continue to remember him and, and your prayers with that. Um, Debbie Pye has asked for her prayers for her, uh, just overall prayers for her children. Uh, Cheryl Richardson's brother is recovering from a stroke. Uh, he's doing some better from, from what she said. Uh, Ruby Van Ho Vanover has been in the hospital and, and is reported to be coming home today uh, from the hospital. And I want to continue to remember those that will be traveling, uh, especially Tim and Sally, as they're going to be going to uh, uh, Sri Lanka for a wedding. So uh, we will now have Chris come up and give us the details of camp last week. I don't want to yell out when Brian was talking to you all. It's, it, the the area-wide singing is not this coming Friday. It's in July. So I had a little bit of correction there. So it's the last Friday in July, not June. I know it's been out there, message out there a couple times. I promise you it's in July. And they're right, Mr. Bright. So get make sure we do that. And a quick update on PBC. As you know, this congregation that, uh, supports the second week of Palmetto Bible Camp every year. Uh, it's one of the key things, key highlights between this and the Horizons event for the youth in this congregation. And I uh, had a really great week. Uh, thing, uh, couldn't ask for any better weather. Maybe a little bit cooler. It was pretty hot. I know I've probably, I, I've never done this before. I went to camp and I came back from camp lighter than I was when I left. So I've, I've always gained weight at camp. This is the first time losing weight. So that's kind of interesting. Uh, but it was really, really warm. Camp was great. Um, uh, just give you some facts with some numbers. Uh, we had 163 folks at camp. That's with the counselors, workers, and all that kind of stuff. And, um, and that's so. I think there was about 100 campers, and the rest were were staffed to help with the week go on. Um, but I do like to talk about some of the awards that were given uh, during the week. Uh, I'll let you know how folks from this congregation, if they're related to you or um, how things went on. But they, they give awards out for folks that really make an impact on others' lives during that week. 
And I'll, so I'll mention this, Jeremiah Judd, I know he's not a member here at this congregation, but he visits frequently with his girlfriend. Uh, but he was noted for the, uh, get an award, it's called the Helen Richardson Award. And if y'all knew Miss Helen, we could, uh, affectionately called her Grandma Helen. Uh, great lady, very, very uh, instrumental in the success and where, where Palmetto Bible Camp is today and that whole Richardson family. And Jeremiah won that award for, for a, a uh, uh, he was a camper just about all his life it seems like and uh, now uh, serving out on his staff and it's, it's, uh, it's, to note, it's to recognize staff in their first three years as uh, doing a good job. Um, outside of that, uh, uh, some of the other awards are for Bible students and Master of Memories and things like that. And for the uh, seniors, they divide it in young kids and juniors and then they're the older, the 13 and up is uh, considered a senior. And uh, with that we had, if you'd stand, uh, if I want to call you Rebecca Pepper, Alex Kimbrell and Amy Pepper were nominated, and Alex Kimbrell won the Super Student uh, Award for the seniors at, at camp. So congratulate them for, for uh, being recognized, and also for Alex for winning that award. Uh, within the junior female camper, of the, I know the Weavers aren't here, but their granddaughter, Caroline, was, was nominated in that area. Unfortunately, she didn't win, but, and then, um, we had uh, in the senior female campers, this is the overall good attitudes, very helpful, uh, uplifting, edifying, do as they're told, and, and uh, as Paul wrote to Fleeman that doing more than he says. So these are the, the, the folks that go above and beyond. So again, stand if your name is called Amy Pepper, Rebecca Pepper, Alex Kimbrell, and Lily Parsons. Lily Sick. Camp crud, right? Yep. Going around. Anyway, but uh, so she's not here, but uh, the Parsons, as you know, are uh, nieces and nephews of the Peppers, and, and uh, Julie is here today, but her daughter, uh, uh, Lily Parsons, won that award. Um, so uh, I will say this from, from uh, we had a ton of staff from this congregation go. A lot of the young uh, college age, young adults went. So really, really nice to see that. I'll be 51 this year, and let me tell you what, camp takes a, more of a toll on my body every single year, and I, I feel it. I mean, I'm hurting right now. I'm not going to deny it. Um, anyway, great time, but it's good to see the youth get more involved. We had a lot of new folks come out. We had David visit. We had Erica on staff. We had Kai on staff, um, and, and Sarah Grace was there doing things. So really appreciate the effort and the endeavor this congregation does to help out with second week. but. As I always do, we can always do more. So uh, if you'd like to be involved in this work, please let me know. Oh, I looked up at I bet it's April. They are. <laughs> uh, April was very instrumental in a lot of things, and Julie as well. So if you want to do and be involved with Palmetto Bible Camp, it's a great, great work to work with the kids. Let me know, and we will get you plugged in and, and ready to play. But thank you for your time and attention this morning. Most kind and most gracious Heavenly Father, we thank you, Father, for yet another beautiful Lord's Day you blessed us with. We thank you, Father, for each and every one who has chose to gather here this Lord's Day and join in the worship to thee. Father, we pray for all those who were mentioned this morning, those who have received cancer diagnosis, Father, those who are in the hospital or at home sick, we pray that you'll be with each one of them. Pray, Father, that you'll be with the doctors and nurses who care for them, that you'll give them a Remembrance of the things they've studied so they can give the proper care, Father, that they'd all be restored to a better portion of health. Father, we thank you for the church family here at Bowling Springs. We thank you for all the men and women who are teach the Bible classes. Father, we pray that you'll be with each one of them as they prepare their lessons week to week, and they'll be able to present them in a way that everyone would be able to comprehend. Father, we Thank you for Brother Martin and Brother Marshall and their willingness to stand before us and present us with lessons. Pray, Father, that as Brother Marshall occupies the pulpit here in a little bit, that he'll have a ready remembrance of the things he's prepared for us and that he'll present them in a way that we can comprehend and take and apply them to our daily lives. And Father, as we go out to the work week, we pray, Father, that if we 
cross paths with someone who has not yet obeyed the gospel and we do or say something that will pique their interest, Father, and that we'll be able to lead them to understand and obey the truth before it's everlastingly too late. Father, we pray that as we go through this service here today that everything is said and done and we're pleasing to Thee. We ask, Father, that You forgive us of all our many sins and shortcomings and strengthen us where we're weak. It's in Christ's name we pray. Amen. Amen. Scripture will be from Luke 15, 11 through 24. Luke 15, 11 through 24. Then he said, A certain man had two sons, and the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that fall to me. So he divided to them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there wasted his possessions with prodigal living. But when he had spent all, there arose a, s a severe famine in the land, and he began in want. Then, when he, then he went and joined himself to a citizen of that country, and he sent him into his fields to feed swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods that the swine ate, and no one gave him anything. But when he came to himself, he said, How many of my father's hired servants have bread enough and to spare, and I will perish with hunger? I will arise and go to my father, and will say to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and before you, and I am no longer worthy to be called your son. Make me like, you, like one of your hired servants. And he arose and came to his father. But when he was still a great way off, his father saw him and had compassion, and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said to him, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight, and am no longer worthy to be called your son. But the father said to the servants, Bring out the best robe and put it on him, and put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet, and bring the fatted calf here and kill it, and let us eat and be merry. For this my son was dead and is alive again. He was lost and is found, and they began to be merry. country or God will run. Then Jesus said, a certain man had two sons and the younger of them said to his father, father, give me the portion of the goods that falls to me. And so he divided them his livelihood. And not many days after, the younger son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there exhausted his possessions with wasteful living. But when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in that land, and he began to be in want. And then he went and joined himself to the citizen of that country, and he sent him into the fields to feed the swine, and he gladly would have filled his stomach with the pods the swine ate, and no one was giving him anything. A certain man had two sons. The teachings of Jesus are substantial. They're real, intimate, vital. This is not a fairy tale. Every one of us this morning sitting in this auditorium understands this story. What will happen to our children? Do you have children? Do you have two sons? This story has real meaning. We understand. Jesus helps us. He gives us a favor, does us a favor. <clears throat> there we go. Jesus helps us. He tells us how to save our children by telling us how they get lost. Children, people, anyone can be lost in a far country or you can be lost right at home. 
selfishness in verse 12. And the younger of them said to his father, Father, give me the portion of goods that falls to me. So he divided to him, <clears throat> to them his livelihood. Our very first prayers are, Lord, give me. As we grow and mature, our prayer becomes, Lord, forgive me. A son left home saying, give me. And when he returned, he said, Father, forgive me. Give me what I want, when I want it, and I want it right now. And the father gave the boy's inheritance to him. Selfishness is what causes all trips to the far country. Napoleon Bonaparte never saw a throne he didn't want to sit on. And selfishness got him exiled to St. Helena Island in the middle of the Atlantic where he died. This young man is only concerned with me, myself, and I. Sounds like this young man wanted what an adult wants without the responsibility and commitment that goes along with it. It's no different in America in the 21st century than it was in the first century. Many young people want everything their parents and grandparents have. They want that lifestyle. But they want it without the sweat and blood and tears that it took to get it. And so many of them wind up in debt up to their ears. They want the lifestyle, but they don't want the work. You know, people want intimacy. They want sexual relationships without the commitment and responsibility of marriage. Casual sex is the term that is the norm in America and in Europe today. Casual sex does not involve any expectation of commitment or responsibility. It's just sex. People want freedom without accountability or consequences. People say they want freedom. They say that they want liberty, but what they really want is license. They want permission to do as they please without responsibility or consequences. Let me tell you, I've taught the government for many years. There's no such thing as absolute freedom. The same is true of, Amer of <clears throat> uh, the same is true of religion. People want what Jesus offers. People want to be saved. They want the benefits of the church without commitment to God or the church. Have you ever seen people in this predicament? The more they get what they want, the less they want what they got. You ever seen that? I've seen that. So the father divided his living. The Hebrew custom dictated the eldest son received two-thirds of the property, but he had to keep it in the family name, and he could never sell it. There was no such stipulation to the younger sons. The prodigal received his one-third and did what he wished with it, and selfishness reigned. Selfishness leads to separation, verse 13. And not many days after the younger son gathered all together, he journeyed to a far country and there exhausted his possessions with wasteful living. Have you ever noticed a person with sin on their mind is always in a hurry? The prodigal, the younger son, received his portion of inheritance and he hurried to get out of town. But this trip to the far country did not happen overnight. This prodigal son had read stories. He'd talked to his friends. He'd seen advertisements in magazines, TV, social media, the internet, and he'd heard about the far country on satellite radio. The trip to the far country was thought out, planned, harbored in his thoughts for months, maybe for years. Lust for the far country was in the young man's heart before the dust was on his feet. Sin is always in a far country. One cannot live riotously at home. We must leave home to live riotously. One cannot live riotously alone. You must have someone to do it with. But sin occurs wherever you take it. 
I love history. I've studied it for a large portion of my life, and I love to look back and see things that are two and 3,000 years old, and yet they are just as relevant and fresh today as they were then. A very ancient Greek proverb says this, the problem with Aristobulus is that wherever Aristobulus goes, he takes Aristobulus with him. Tragedies are always interesting. Have you watched the growth of social media? Young people think that they have something new and exciting. But all of us have been young people at some point. Social media does the same thing that newspapers and books and monuments and TV shows and movies have always done. It capitalizes on tragedy. Granted, it does it a lot quicker, but it's still the same. You read and see on social media the same event that had one million views. And the young people say, boy, that event just blew up on TikTok or Instagram or wherever. But what events blow up with the largest number of followers? And I can tell you that it's described in two words, dirty laundry. Don Henley wrote a best-selling song about dirty laundry. Dirty laundry always makes the news and it blows up social media because tragedy shocks us and tragedy frightens us, but tragedy also thrills us. After all, inquiring minds want to know. Selfishness and situation Excuse me, separation then leads to sin. Verse 13 again. And not many days after the young son gathered all together, journeyed to a far country, and there exhausted his possessions with wasteful living. When you separate a selfish child from his parents, a life of sin will always result. Never forget, always keep in mind, all humans are dangerous. J.L. Heber's wife drove a tent peg in Sisera's brain. Abraham told lies. Moses committed murder. David committed adultery and murder. Paul was breathing threats and murder against Christians. Peter denied after three years of being with Jesus that he even knew who he was. The selfish son did not leave home because he wanted to become the world's worst sinner. He walked out the door and when he did, he wasn't say anything awful about the far country. He was looking forward to it. And he looked at his dad and said, don't worry about me, dad. I'm going to be okay. Mom, I'm going to be all right. The selfish prodigal would have hotly denied and argued the pig pen ending. Who? Me? In the gutter? Drunk, barefoot, dressed in a dirty t-shirt and jeans, feeding pigs? Are you out of your mind? What were the sins of the foolish son? The word prodigal means exceeding or recklessly wasteful. He wasted his time. He squandered his money. But I want you to notice something about this text. I hope you've read it carefully with me as we've gone through it. Have you noticed no specific sin ever mentioned. The New King James Bible says, the prodigal squandered his waste with wasteful living. Now, there are many words in English that if you simply add the letter A as a prefix, the word transitions to the opposite meaning. The word typical means normal. It means usual or ordinary or average. And we would say, that's typical of her. And... If you add a prefix of a to the word typical, you get atypical. Atypical means not normal. Describes a state or condition or behavior that is unusual or different from what's considered normal. It's the same in the Greek. If you want to create the opposite meaning of a word, you place an alpha or an a in front of that word. And so what we have here in the Greek is the word sozo which simply means to be saved 
or to save. It means to be saved from sickness, be rescued from an accident, or to be saved from sin. But when you add an A or an alpha in front of the word sozo, you get the word azotos, which means unsavable, incurable, or incorrigible. Asotos is the word that Luke uses in Luke 15 and verse 13. The Greeks used asotos to describe a person who by riotous living destroys himself. I have felt the same way sometimes as that child. <laughs> Lisa disciplines me for crying out like that, but it happens. Asotos is the process of reckless waste, free reign given to every passion. A person who lives a wild and undisciplined life. Azotos is the process of reckless waste, free reign given to every passion. A person must continue until nothing is left. This is what undisciplined freedom comes to, folks. There, the Holy Spirit provided Luke with the concept of azotos. And isn't it interesting that Jesus does not specifically mention even one sin? I love it. Jesus allows us to draw our own conclusions as to what sins the prodigal son committed. Now, in Luke chapter 15 and verse 30, the elder brother says that his younger brother wasted his money on prostitutes. But the Bible doesn't say that. That is speculation on the part of the elder brother. Sin, separation, selfishness, now this young man is starving. And when he had spent all, there arose a severe famine in the land and began to be in want. Then he went and joined himself to the citizens of that country, and he went to the fields to feed the swine. And he would gladly have filled his stomach with the pods the swine ate, and no one was giving him anything. This young man paid the high cost of loose living, and he was starved in three ways. Number one, he was starved physically. When I was age 12, my daddy bought me a Greyhound bus station ticket. <clears throat> we would not do this today with our children. And they put me on a bus in St. Petersburg, Florida, and I was going to be 20 hours on the Greyhound bus going to just outside of Birmingham, Alabama, where my grandmother lived. She lived on a 600-acre dirt farm where they raised cotton and corn and a lot of vegetables, fresh vegetables, hogs and cows and fresh milk. And boy, doesn't it make you hungry just to think about that fresh cornbread and those good old country biscuits. I got to go there. I think, actually, my parents were getting rid of me for a month every year. <clears throat> From age 12 to age 16, they shipped me off to Asheville, Alabama. And while I was there, my Aunt Mary looked at me the first time I came. It was age 12, and she said, now, son, she never really knew my name. She just always called me son. Now, son, while you're here, you're going to have to do chores. And I said, wow, that's so cool. Because I grew up on a plot of land 50 feet wide and 100 feet uh, long, a 900 square foot, two bedroom, one bath house with four people and a dog. Downtown St. Petersburg, Florida. And you know what? I was glad to get out in the country. She said, you have chores. And I said, all right. And one of my chores was to empty the slop bucket every evening. Five gallon bucket. And after every meal, my aunt would go out and scrape off whatever leftovers into that bucket, old buttermilk, milk, cornbread, biscuits, whatever. The hogs don't care. But let me tell you what, I looked into that slop bucket the first time I hauled it down 100 yards to give it to those pigs, and I have never seen or smelled anything in that slop bucket that I wanted to eat. But the pigs, whoo, they had a big smile on their face. And they ate it up, stood in it, and ate it up. They thought it was the greatest thing ever. The pigs were not going hungry. The prodigal was going hungry. The pods or husk of the carob tree were used to fatten pigs in Egypt and Syria. 
They have high sugar content and poor people eat them as well. The selfish son also was starved socially. He was alone. The son could not sin alone, but sin leads to loneliness. Have you ever noticed that? Sin leads to being alone. As long as the son was buying the Budweiser and the margaritas, he was popular. But when the money ran out, so did his friends, and he was alone. The selfish son was starved financially. His inheritance was gone. His plenty had become poverty. Starving, alone, and broke is not a pretty picture. When I was a young man... In my early teens, I was still pretty short. I know you can't believe that. And I wanted to be a submariner in the worst way. I wanted to serve the United States of America on submarines. And then at age 13 to 16, I grew 17 inches. My legs used to ache because the bones could not keep up with the growth of the muscles and the rest of me. My dad would have to take a rubber hammer, if you know what one of those is, and with the muscle spasms I had, he would gently massage my calves and quads because it hurt so much. And when I got to be six foot six inches tall, I couldn't serve in the submarine corps. And it broke my heart. But I used to do a lot of reading about the submarine corps and I read about an admiral by the name of Hyman Rickover who is called the father of the United States Navy's nuclear Navy. Hyman Rickover was a very he was a very common sense oriented person and I read an article about him once when I was about 15 And I've tried to live by that advice every day. It's almost like reading Proverbs or Ecclesiastes. Rickover said, learn from the mistakes of others. You don't live long enough to make them all yourself. Wow, that is really good advice for everyone. Learn by the mistakes of others. You don't have to get drunk to know how foolish and dangerous alcoholism is. Learn from others. You don't have to commit adultery to know adultery leads to other sins and will destroy your marriage. Learn from King David. Learn from others. You don't have to be diagnosed with cancer to realize that tobacco products are going to destroy your throat and lungs. Learn from others. I did. I watched my father die of lung cancer. He smoked non-filter camels for 40 years. And I said, you know what? I know I'm going to die, but I don't want to die that way. I learned from others. You don't have to commit whatever sin to realize that it will get you into trouble. Learn from others. Sin results from selfishness and separation. And now the prodigal son is lost. Have you ever really contemplated lost? My brother served aboard the USS Annapolis, a converted aircraft carrier, in the mid-60s during the Vietnam War. They finished a 13-month tour of duty in the South China Sea, and they stopped in Subic Bay in the Philippines for rest and recreation. Then they proceeded to San Diego for repairs and an overhaul. On the trip home, steaming at night in the middle of the Pacific Ocean, average depth 13,000 feet, a Lieutenant J.G. either fell overboard or was pushed overboard. They never figured out which. They set up a search and rescue grid for 72 hours, but he was lost, never found. Sharks follow ships at sea to feast on the garbage thrown overboard. The rescue party speculated that sharks ate him. Can you imagine being lost in that way? Now think about being lost for eternity. Can you imagine without God, without hope, 
gone forever. There's a very ancient fable called the fox and the old lion. In this fable, a fox is talking with the jackal and they're discussing the merits of going into his, this old cave. An old lion had gone into the cave supposedly to die. Other animals had gone into the cave never to return. Finally, the jackal turns and the fox talks to him. And as they're walking away, the fox says, all the tracks lead into the cave, but no tracks are coming out of the cave. This describes sin. Ladies and gentlemen, brothers and sisters, many tracks lead to sin, but only a few tracks ever lead out. Luke chapter 20, excuse me, 15 verses 20 through 22 is good news. When he came to his senses, he arose and came to his father, but he was still a great way off. And his father saw him and had compassion and ran and fell on his neck and kissed him. And the son said, Father, I have sinned against heaven and in your sight. I'm no longer worthy to be called your sin. The picture that I get in my mind when I close my eyes of that scene is the son is off in the far country and the father is standing at the crossroads waiting for his son to return. That's the way fathers are. We want our children to come to their senses when they've gone off into the far country. This father was waiting. But the father said to his servants, bring out the best robe and put it on him. And put a ring on his hand and sandals on his feet. And bring the fatted calf here and kill it. And let's eat and be merry. For this son of mine that was dead is alive. He was lost and now he's found. And they began to be merry. Did you hear what Jesus said about the prodigal son? It says he came to his senses. Let me tell you, if you have any children who ever go astray, who ever go off into the far country, like Lisa and I have had, you want them, you pray for them to come to their senses. And when they do, you need to be ready to stand there and to hug them and to tell them that you're proud that they have come to their senses and are now doing and living the right way. And we've had the pleasure of seeing that too. All who come to their senses and repent can return to the Lord. Wherever we have been, whatever far country we travel to, there is no sin that is so bad that God will not forgive it if you have repentance in your heart. If you have repentance in your heart, there's no deed so evil that it cannot be pardoned. Is it possible this morning that you need to return to God? Is it possible this morning that you need to be baptized? To begin your new life in Christ this morning? We, any of us, if we have unforgiven sin, we're required to repent and turn to God. And when you repent and return, then the Father will run to meet you. Yes, God will run to meet you whenever you repent. The Father is a wonderful, loving father who stands at the crossroads. And when we've gone off into the far country, he wants us back. But we have to return to him. The father will run to meet you. Yes, God will run as we stand and as we sing together. I want to thank Marshall for an excellent lesson on lost and found. And um, if you're visiting with us again, we are so glad to have you with us. If you would, let's stand for a closing song, and then we'll be led. Will you go with me in prayer? 
Father, we thank you so much for this day you've given us. We thank you, Father, for this time that we as your children can gather here this morning to worship you, to praise your holy name, Father, to remember all that you have done for us and all that you continue to do for us, that you sent your son Jesus to this earth to die for us, that he gave up his life so that we would have life. And we thank you so much for that, Father. And we thank you so much for the blessings of this time that we can uh, sing songs of praise to your name, to be united in prayer, and to know that you are with us, that you are in us as your children. And as we leave here this morning, Father, may we take the light that is in us into the world around us so that people will be able to see you through our good works, Father. And we ask that you'll continue to bless us, to watch over us, to always to seek you in all things, Father, and to do your will. For we ask these things in Jesus' precious name. Amen.